So you've wanted to develop your own iPhone game, but maybe you don't have the programming experience or know-how to make your own engine or just simply the time to invest in making your own game engine and physics for that environment. Well, Corona makes a really nice product for doing 2D game and graphics uh, applications for the iPhone. So we're going to look at how getting started with using Corona today. Um, one of the advantages of Corona is that it does allow you to develop applications for both the iPhone, iPad, the Android, Nexus, quite a few mobile technologies. So we're going to jump into Corona, uh, play a little bit with the Lua programming language, and do a simple getting started application. So here we are, we're ready to get started. Now you have the option when programming with Lua on whether or not you're going to use Xcode, BBEdit, or Eclipse as your editor. Really any kind of text editor is going to make your life a lot easier. I'm going to use the Xcode editor to do my work so that'll make things a little easier. I have downloaded and followed the getting started from the Corona website. Um, that has all kinds of valuable information. If you want more information on where these links are, you can go to my blog at burtonsmediagroup.com forward slash blog. And I have a lot of information on where you can download the trial getting started for Corona, the, uh, the trial SDK for Xcode, and you'll be able to jump right into this with very little expense at all. So I'm ready to get started. I'm going to go ahead and just simply create a new project. Um, I'll just simply do a view base because really this part of it doesn't matter when you're using Xcode for it. And I'm just going to tell this that I want it to save it to my desktop and it's going to be my Lua uh, programming stuff. So I'll just create a folder called Lua stuff and it's now ready to start programming. I need to create another file, new, file, new, file, and I'm going to select other, empty file. And this will give me the environment for creating my main.lua file for doing my Hello World project. I'm going to give it the name main.lua, L-U-A, and finish. So I've got my main Lua now. And let's do a simple Hello World project. To do our first version of this, we just simply need to type in print space left parenthesis quote Hello World exclamation quotation marks right parenthesis. And believe it or not, I'm now done with programming this. I'm going to save my file and it's now saved. I've got it in a folder called Lua Stuff here on my desktop. To run the application I need to open up my finder. I'm going to go to Corona and I'm going to open up the Corona terminal. There we go and I'll open up the dialog box that will allow me to find my application. So I'm going to go to desktop. There's my Lua Stuff. Now, one key thing on using the Corona software, and I have to admit, it took me a few minutes to figure this out. You cannot select main.lua. You select the folder that contains main Lua and click on open. And there you see my hello world right there in the terminal. It shows in the terminal instead of in the simulator because we actually called the print function and the print function is in Lua and in Corona is used for displaying log information what's happening inside the program it's more of a troubleshooting type tool than it is for displaying information to the the actual uh, simulator or the iPhone screen so I need to stop now um, I've, I've got that working yay we were successful so let's go back and let's do something a little bit more interesting. Instead, this time, we're going to use some variables and a little bit of Lua programming to create an actual 
Hello World that will show up on the simulator, which is a little bit more impressive than showing up something in a log file. So I need to create a variable to store this information in. Um, it is critical that you do this as a variable, and I'll explain why in just a second. So I'm going to do local, and we'll call my variable text object, and we'll set that equal to display dot new text and I'm next I need to tell it what I want it to display so hello world comma and then we need to give the location that this is going to be displayed at in this case I'm going to go 50 pixels over 50 pixels down, the XY coordinate of the top left corner of my hello text that's going to be displayed. Then nil, nil is a uh, future tool that's going to be added to the uh, display.newText, so right now we just simply need to put nil, and then the size of the text, and I'm going to go with 24. Now we're not finished. When a new text object is created it's automatically created with no color now that can be an advantage for some applications that we might be working on later on but for right now when we're wanting to display something on the screen it doesn't help us one single bit so what we need to do is we need to set the color to something that can be seen by default our background is black so we're going to set our text to white so that we have a nice high contrast to set the text to white we call our object so text object and then we're going to call the meth the property of text object to set the color so set text color and then using RGB methods we're going to set the color now RGB red green blue sets based upon a number between 0 and 255 for setting this display color. So set color and I'm going to make it white which is 255, 255, 255. Okay, we'll save our project and we're now ready to go ahead and test our project. So I'll go back here to my simulator and open, reopen the file and there it is. We have our first Hello World. You have created your first Corona app. Now, I've, if you had a hard time seeing the, the what I typed in or anything, you can see all of it on my blog site. I have created a full tutorial on getting started with Corona, and there will be a great deal more coming. Um, there's also a tutorial for using Corona to create an Android app.